welcome friends uh, welcome everyone today uh, we are in this uh, introduction to soil and water conservation series today is the third lecture and we will be dealing with a very important topic which would appear new to you it is land capability classification so uh, question comes what is land capability classification capability as we know the chhamta or the potential everything has got a carrying capacity or a potential even the soil or cultivation it has got a carrying cap uh, potential or capacity so land capability classification is that classification in which we divide each piece of land according to its capability so uh, as we have in the previous class we have discussed that all crops cannot be grown in all type of land so accordingly we have divided this uh, capability of land according to its classification we have classified into two groups two main groups one is the land which is suitable for cultivation and second is the land which is not suitable for cultivation suitable for cultivation comes under arable land and the uh, land which is not suitable for cultivation that comes under uh, non arable land or land where we cannot uh, profitably cultivate crops so according to this classification which is also popularly known as lcc there are two broad uh, broad classifications uh, uh this is uh, those are uh, these are land which is suitable for cultivation or arable land and land which is not suitable for cultivation or non arable land in uh, the first class main class there are four classes or four sub classes class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 4 and in the second category again we have four groups class four or five sorry class 6 uh, class 7 and class 8 now the parameter or the determining factor which classifies or which differentiate each piece of land from the other we have taken although there are many parameters but the major parameters are your land slope number 1 second is soil texture number 3 the soil depth and four is your soil erodibility land slope or soil slope land slope as you know what is slope uh, slope you might be familiar with which uh, come across many uh, in in our everyday situation slope you know is the uh, ratio expressed in percentage that is the vertical interval by horizontal interval in expressed in terms of percentage is called a slope or in what we in a vernacular or popular language call it dhalan see say this is a plain surface if we tilt it then there is a certain slope or certain gradient and what is that gradient that is slope say slope can be even 100% sometimes people confuse if 100% slope means it is vertical it's not 100% slope means there is uh, that is 1045 degree that is uh, if you have 45 degree, anything tilted at 45 degree angle that is 100% slope similarly we have categorized this land uh, according to the slope so that is one parameter second is soil depth soil depth is a very very important parameter for which determine the productivity of any land and also the uh, selection of crop is also based upon soil depth any crop which is deep rooted which uh, we cannot grow in uh, uh, land which has got less soil depth here in this picture we can see we have uh, classified for just a representation we have classified all the eight classes of land out of which half are land which is not suitable and half that is class 1 2 3 
and 4 those are land which is suitable for cultivation here we see class 1 not necessarily that it is not necessary that class uh, class uh, class 3 which is uh, which we can see is on the lower reach and there could be more moisture not necessary that the lowest uh, the uh, soil which is land which is at the lowest elevation that should be the most suitable it's actually not so the, here is class 1 class 2 this is just a uh, representative you can see class 8 you can see this barren land which we have very high slope soil depth naturally would be very less because if there is um, a steep slope runoff will be there uh, anything which falls on it will be uh, flown away so here the cultivation is not play, uh, taking place and the barren soil is coming on the front similarly class 6 7 here also we cannot have agriculture profitable agriculture so such type of land is uh, rendered for some other activities like for pasture land or developing the forest things like that and these are the class 1, 2, 3 and class 4. These are the main area which are the land where we can have cultivation. Class 5 comes under a very special kind of land where although it may be suitable in many respects but it is characterized by wetness or stoniness or salt accumulation which render uh, our cultivation impractical. Now coming to the, all the parameters we have discussed till, discussed till uh, this soil depth. Now soil texture, texture in your introductory class of, for soil science you might have studied what is soil texture. What is soil texture? It's a classification, you know, the proportion to, in which, uh, by which uh, the proportion of sand, silt and clay in a particular soil that is your soil texture and we determine it through sheave analysis we have a particular different uh, sheaves of different openings so respective um, uh, when we shake it the uh, soil particles of that particular size will will be uh, deposited on that sheave so soil texture is another very important parameter and uh, last is your soil erodibility Soil erodibility, erosion, erodibility. Erodibility is the property of soil through which it resists the uh, soil erosion. Like there is uh, two things. One is erosivity and second is erodibility. Erosivity is a function of your rainfall. The force with which the rain is falling or the intensity with which the rain is falling. That is soil erosivity. And soil erodibility is the resistance offered by the soil in in you know in in controlling the soil erosion or keeping all the soil uh, bed intact. That is your soil erodibility. So this we have taken the, as the ma uh, main parameters which determine through which we classify land according to its capability. Although there are also some uh, subclasses like nutrient availability, soil moisture, those are also, uh, uh, these uh, subclasses also uh, supplement this uh, land capability classification. But these four, that is land slope, soil depth, soil texture and soil erodibility are the main determining factor through which this land capability classification we have done. Again, have a look through this picture, you can see class 1 class 1 type of land that uh, that class of land we consider the best suited for cultivation because in this type of land class 1 type of land the land slope would be near flat or would be very mild slope soil depth would be uh, sufficiently high so what is soil depth it is the upper zone top soil where the root penetrates or where there is maximum nutrient availability that is your soil depth and typically in a, in a typical soil it ranges from 50 centimeter to 100 centimeter if it is more than 80 90 it is considered considered very good if it is less say 25 or 10 then the 
slowly slowly the uh, bed, uh, substrata is getting exposed that indicate that is a, itself is an indication of a land where erosion is taking place so in such type of land these two parameters as well as soil texture what is the best texture which is suited for agriculture should it be clay no should it be sand no it should be a mixture mixture of clay sand silt in a proportion in a more or less equal proportion in such type of land you will find uh, pro, uh, almost equal proportion of sand clay and silt or loamy soil that we call that is considered best for such type of land so in uh, class uh, class 1 type of land has such type of soil and soil erodibility now see all these are related if you have less slope erosion will be less if the uh, if erosion is less soil depth would be more and soil texture uh, um, uh, good texture soil will 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 not permit erosion so as a result the depth would be more and soil erodibility again it is classified as different notations we are given and in such type of land the soil erosion or the erodibility of soil would be high that is the resistance of soil to the uh, forces of agents of this rainfall and wind would be less so erosion in such lands would be less similarly class 2 type of soil class 2 type of soil would be a little inferior to class 1 type of soil in all these parameters like the soil depth would be good but not better than class 1 see soil texture would be again uh, soil texture can be a combination of, the, of sand silt and clay it could be a loamy soil but still the erodibility would be little less than the class 1 that is the erosion uh, which is taking place in class 2 type of soil would be little more but still manageable and class 3 uh, as we go up the ladder the uh, you know the uh, quality of land or the capacity of land or the capability of land is getting decreased here again the slope would be little more what exactly it should be will be telling you Soil depth would be less, soil texture would be more towards, inclined towards one particular type of texture, either it would be sandy or it would be, uh, it would be, although there would be um, sand, clay and silt, but the proportion of anything would be predominating, right. And soil erodibility or the erosion happening in such type of land would be little higher. Similarly, class 4 again, class 4 would be little uh, little worse than class 3 see here class 3 um, in this picture what we are seeing is class 3 is coming at the lowest end of this uh, terrain that means at the lower end what happens is there you would find the um, uh, maximum availability of clay soil and clay soil or any one particular kind of soil be it sandy sandy of course you find in the higher lands like this type of land here you find clay side type of soil because of the continuous deposition of clay in such type of soil in such type of soil normally in our area we take rice because here the availability of water is always there but it is still not considered the best type of soil for cultivation so here it would be soil type would be or soil texture would be more or less clay type of soil again class 4 class 4 again it, it has to be manipulated that uh, land has to be manipulated to bring it under cultivation then class the, then uh, these are the classes which is not suitable for agriculture class 6 class 7 where is class 8 uh, class 5, class 6, class 7 and class 8. Class 5, it's a very typical case. Class 5 could be at a middle reach or lower middle reach. It could have good, uh, it could have lesser slope, it could have good soil depth, it could have very good texture, but still it is rendered useless because of one of the following reasons. Number one, you know, there could be wetness all around. I mean, 
the most most time this type of soil would be wet or it could be sea water brackish water intruded soil where the salt content is very high then in such type of uh, soil although you have all the good parameter all the parameters very right but still cultivation is not possible such type of special case is class 5 type of land class 6 here land slope would be even higher soil depth would be very less because the because it is at a higher elevation slope is high it, uh, it would be subject to uh, subjected to more erosion then slowly and steadily the bedrock or the uh, substrata gets exposed the soil depth would be less such type of land we again cannot uh, be cultivated uh, cannot be cultivated for, uh, profitably such type of land we give it for pasture development or grazing land class 7 is again a forest land this cannot be uh, put under cultivation and class 8 type of land is wasteland such a uh, cliff would uh, help, uh, would be there you know uh, ravines would be there is there a land such type of land uh, one can go for some atheistic uh, or recreational purpose or something like that or wildlife improvement such type of thing can be done in such type of land now these are the parameters we, we are going to explain Please give uh, pay attention to this. First is the land capability class based on soil texture. We have already discussed four things. Number one, texture, you know, uh, land slope, soil depth, and soil erodibility or erosion status. According to this LCC or land capability classification, the textural class could be sandy. Loamy sand, sandy loam, loam, silty loam, silt, silt soil, sandy clay loam, silt clay loam, clay loam, silty clay or clay. These are the different combination. Uh, this we uh, get from uh, textural analysis and there is a, a very famous table through which we can find which type of, uh, so this, uh, which type of soil falls under which category. So this sand uh, type of soil where sand is predominating in such type of soil according to LCC it comes under category 4 and this combination of sand, silt and clay that is loamy soil be it loamy sand, be it sandy loam, be it loam, silty loam, silt, sandy clay loam or silty clay loam or simply clay loam this falls under class 1 type of land and this sandy clay where uh, sand uh, proportion of sand and clay are more or less same this comes under class 2 and silt clay again this comes under class 2 where the proportion of silt and clay are more or less same it does not mean it does not have sand although it would be having sand also in certain proportion but the predominant uh, texture would be silt and clay now this clay simply clay where uh, in this proportion texture class where clay predominates sand would be there silt would be there but the percentage of sand sorry clay is much higher such type of uh, soil is called clay soil which is class 3 we have seen in the previous you know here this is class 3 type of land mostly the lower reach where soil gets accumulated and moisture is always available such type of land we can have only one crop because other times it is always moist and the water table is very high which affect the root zone now second is the uh, land class based on land slope slope is what is slope again just rewind yourself slope is your vertical interval by horizontal interval or in very plain in hindi it is dhalar right so any land for proper agri agriculture for agriculture or cultivation to take place it is always desirable to have a plain surface 
so when the land slope is 0 to 1 and we denote it by symbol a this comes under class 1 and especially for red soil again it uh, the determining factor could be for many uh, for different soil the land slope may differ or the categorization of land slope may differ like in the indo gangetic plain like alluvial soil the classification would be different for black cotton soil the classification could be different for mine, uh, hilly terrain or mountainous soil the classification may, uh, may vary or this notation may change but the place where we are living in Chotanagpur area we have mostly the red soil for this classification uh, if the land slope is you know between 0 to 1 this comes under class 1 if it comes uh, uh, land slope is 1 to 3 it comes under class 2 if land slope is 3 to 5 class 3 if it is 10 to 15 it comes under class 4 again this class uh, 5 to 15 is clubbed together into class 4 as class 4 if the land slope is 25 to 33 then it is comes under class 6 again class 5 to class 8 let me remind you once again these are non arable land and h is denoted by area which has a land slope of 33 to 50 percent and again this comes under class 7 and if the land slope is more than 50 percent say 100 percent more than 50 percent it come under it will come under class 8 which generally this 5 to 8 we don't use it for agriculture although some other activities like forest development, grazing land development, recreational or aesthetic development, such type of thing can be developed from, from this type of land. Now again I want to, I, I presume one doubt in your mind that what is slope, if, if it is, can we say a slope of 100% definitely, if again we have already discussed a little while ago, if the slope if the land surface makes a 45 degree angle with the horizontal that is 100 percent slope can you say what is the slope of this wall vertical wall so what is slope slope is vertical distance divided by horizontal distance expressed in terms of percentage so in case of a vertical wall what is the vertical distance maybe three meter four meter what is the horizontal distance zero so zero, uh, anything divided by zero is infinity. So a vertical wall does not have any slope. So what is the slope of your floor? Here, the vertical distance is zero. Horizontal distance is something, maybe 5, 10, anything. So zero by anything is zero. So any, a floor has got zero percent slope. That is, it is plain surface. I hope this uh, slope thing is clear to you. The next important parameter is your soil depth. According to this land capability classification, soil depth we have categorized into five groups. Soil depth more than 90 centimeter, we have denoted it by D5. If it is between 45 to 90 centimeter, then we denote it with D4. If it is 22.5 to 45, then D3. 7.5 to 22.5, D2. And less than 7.5, we give the notation as D1. And which class, according to this land capability classification, which class this uh, soil depth fall into? D5, that is the best soil uh, we can think of that is class 1 type where the depth would be maximum where depth is more than 90 centimeter if the depth is 45 to 90 centimeter then it comes under class 2 if 22.5 to 45 d3 then class 3 if it is d2 class 4 and if it is less than 7.5 what does less uh, less than less than 7.5 practically mean that means the substrata or the hard surface is being exposed and when if you don't have soil top soil 
the cultivation naturally is not possible. There what best you can do is you can plant some perennial tree or increase the productivity of the forest in such type of land. And class 6 to class 8 type of land fall under that category. Here do you note one thing, here class 5 type of land is no, nowhere featured here. Why? Why? Because we have discussed right away a little while ago that class 5 type of land is a special category of land where the soil depth could be very good, the land slope could be very mild and all other parameters could be very good but still it could be rendered useless just because of brackish water intrusion, uh, stoniness, wetness or marshy type of land. So that's why this did not feature in this land capability classification. If you see the soil profile, you might be studied about A, B, C, D, uh, A, B, C horizons, horizons. This A horizon that is the place where the organic matter is housed, regime is there, minerals, nutrients, organic matter is there, that is there in the top 25 centimeters. And B, B horizon comes below that, where again there are also deep rooted crops penetrate, but it comes under the B zone. Uh, so what this suggests is, in class 1, 2, 4 agricultural land, here in ty this type of uh, soil, the A, A horizon is always intact. So any cultivation taking place, the root will go till the a, a horizon and may penetrate little towards the B horizon and beyond that C and R, this, these are bedrocks and withered parent materials, if, uh, there the survival of the crop, if it is exposed, you see if erosion is more, if rainfall impact is more, runoff is taking place, then what will happen? is that there would be migration of this organic matter, minerals, nutrients from one place to another and this hard surface will get exposed. That's why, that, that is where we get this soil depth as 7.5 or less than 7.5. I think it's clear to you. Now the fourth parameter that we are discussing that is the erodibility or the erosion status. Erodibility we have discussed, it is the resistance offered by the soil 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 as a parent body parent material to the agents of erosion like wind and raindrop or flowing water so erodibility for class 1 2 would be higher it would be lower for 2 3 3 and 4 like that so in this type of erosion uh, category we have given a notation as e1 E2, E3 and E4. So E1 represents negligible erosion where up to 25% of the A horizon is lost. This is the, your A horizon. It may out of this 25% of if the loss of A horizon is up to 25% then we can categorize it as E1. So it, symbol, it is symbolic that in such type of places the erosion is comparatively less. And this is a typical feature of class 1 and class 2 type of land. Now then uh, comes the notation E2 where moderate erosion, erosion where half to three fourths of the A horizon is lost due to erosion. And such type of land, such type of feature we find in class 3 type of land in the LCC. Now comes E3 where the severity of erosion is much higher, where A horizon is completely lost. How is it lost? Because of withering, because of erosion, because of wrong cultivation practices and many, many other reasons. Here the, this A horizon that is the uh, storehouse of everything, all good nutrients, um, good uh, moisture and, every, and organic matter, this is lost or this is the topsoil is lost, such type of erosion we denote it as E3 
and this is a feature of class 4 type of land and E4 the worst case scenario where very severe erosion about 25 to 75 percent of B horizon forget A horizon now the um, eating away of the soil has come to the B horizon that is the substrata again he, um, from here the 25 percent to 75 percent is lost that means the hard surface is totally exposed so imagine how cultivation can take place there then such type of land can only be used for some special purpose things mining or some, or some other type of thing that is typical feature of six seven Pas pasture can be developed if proper species is chosen and it can be used for grazing land or the improvement of tree species in, especially in forest lands so these are the four parameters discussed that we have discussed number one land slope number two uh, soil depth number three soil texture and class number four your soil erodibility or the erosion status Now coming to what is our purpose of classifying this land. In the uh, uh, previous lecture what we have discussed, we have discussed different water erosion control measures where we have uh, discussed about the agronomic measure and second we have also discussed about the agronomic or the soil amendment or uh, the and uh, lastly we have discussed the mechanical or the uh, engineering measures. Now the question comes why we have uh, classified the land uh, according to its capability so uh, the land which requires such type of measures which is the land say class one type of land where the slope is all it it comes uh, top class in all of the parameters so uh, there could be possibility that no, none of this measures is uh, required or simply so simple management of agriculture or management of soil is required so instead of putting our uh, more effort in uh, a good a good land or good type of land we have to categorize which type of treatment which type of soil conservation measure has to be put in which type of land according to the land capability classification so these are the arable land class 1 to 4 here there is no significant limitation in use of the crop so the, here we can cultivate crop without any, maybe without any treatment or simply managing the crop well. Or even the agronomic measures would not be required here. So this type of land um, is the class 1 type of land where it has come uh, with flying colors with all the four uh, parameters. Now second type of land, here there is some limitation. And such type of land you, you can simply we can simply uh, manage the land with proper agriculture management or at the most some kind of uh, agronomic measures like rotation so that the soil health is maintained so uh, crop rotation or strip cropping or if there is uh, windy situation wind like situation in some place such type of things can be avoided and second is we uh, are the type of land where we have moderate limitation that restrict the range of crop so some moderate conservation practice in such type of land would be required like the agronomic measures which we have discussed like contour bunting, contour farming, strip cropping, mulching or in some cases bunting. Bunting comes under uh, mechanical measure where there is some man manipulation of the land where some obstruction has to be put in certain type of soil so that, so that if there is runoff the water will not flow away. And third is your land which has got some serious limitations that restricts the cultivation of crop here again agronomic measure would not be sufficient there we have to go for more mechanical measures like bunding terracing that we have discussed in the previous class now comes the fourth type of land that has serious limitation that restrict the range of crop and here we have to do uh, manage with some special conservation practices like in class 4 type of land land slope would be very high soil texture would not be that good as that of class 1 and 2 soil depth would be a limiting factor again the erosion in such type of land because of these factors would be high 
So here we have to uh, apply mechanical measures uh, which should be reinforced with agronomic measures. Like if we construct land slope is very high, then we have to construct platforms, then we have to go for bench terracing. Then bench terracing alone would not be sufficient. Bench terracing should be supported with agronomic measures like on the buns, on the berms, there should be some vegetation, there should be vegetative waterway for collection of water, uh, excess water which is coming out of, from these buns and bench terraces. Such type of measures we have to adopt here. Now coming to the non-arable land, uh, non-arable land particularly class 5 we have already discussed, it could have all parameters very good but still it is rendered useless because of either of one reason stoniness, wetness or marshy land like situation or brackish water or intrusion of salt. So, uh, this is class 6 type of land this is not capable of producing uh, crop, but such type of land can be used for forage crop or developing the grazing land or can be uh, put aside for grazing so that uh, the grasses grow there and with uh, limited uh, amount of cattle, it can regenerate and it can sustain. Class 7 and class 8, where there no cultivation, nothing can be possible, but still in class 7, the land forest area can be developed, although it is not under the purview of any, uh, any organization because this comes under forest, so forest will have to manage it with their own practices. And class 8 is not at all suitable, it's ravine land, it's barren, completely barren land, rocky land, ravines are there, so such type of land can be uh, used for recreational purpose or some aesthetical purpose. Now, in a nutshell, uh, what you can see in this, uh, uh, in a graphic form is, we have categorized all the different classes, class 1 to class 8. And these are the activities or lands, uh, land use that we can do wildlife, forestry, limited grazing, I'm sorry the uh, letters are not very clear, moderate grazing, worse grazing, limited cultivation, moderate cultivation, intensive cult cultivation, very intensive cultivation. And we have in this column we have put all the different classes. So in class 1 we can go for intensive cultivation. In class 2, we can go for uh, intense cult cultivation, uh, although these things cannot be done here. And, uh, similarly, class 8, we can only do for, go for wildlife improvement. Class 7, wildlife improvement come forestry. Class 6, these three, wildlife uh, forestry plus controlled grazing. This way, we can this is a graphical rep representation how different class how different land capable uh, land can be land use can be done according to the land capability classification go through this graph once it is very pictorial and uh, you can easily understand this now there is a table uh, for land capability classification rating table we call it specific area develop their own type of table and this is based upon the categorization of all the four types of all four parameters that is soil land slope soil depth texture and erodibility here we see we have uh, in fact we'll be uh, putting one uh, practical sort of class for this a black whiteboard or a blackboard would be required for this probably in the next, uh, we'll combine these two uh, together and send it to you. These are uh, the different texture, just for, I'll take five minutes for this. This is the soil depth and here what you, uh, you have to observe here is, as we have sort, uh, said about the land slope, we have different types of slope, uh, soil and different type of soil will behave differently uh, in, for the parameter of land slope like this alluvial soil or the black cotton soil or the red soil. Here if you see for alluvial soil, 3 to 10% comes under class 3 or we denote it by C. 
but same uh, same thing if it comes to red soil because of the uh, inbuilt soil properties it is more attached to each other so up to 5 3 5 to 10 percent comes under class uh, class 3 if you go for more himalayan region or mountainous region even 3 percent or 5 percent of slope um, uh, would lead lead to more erosion or more uh, deterioration of the soil so accordingly now we have chosen according to uh, our situation that is the red soil area we have classified or although there would be some minor difference which what we have uh, uh, given the no, uh, notation and here there would be some difference see you know, slope can be even 100 percent where we represent it by z this exercise we will be doing later and we will combine these two uh, classes and put it for your understanding and according to this we can also do some exercise say suppose a piece of land a farmer has has got five hectare of land and three hectare has uh, out of that two hectare has having land slope this much texture like this or uh, or the erodibility like this so what would be the overall uh, capability class so according to uh, this form it uh, it's not necessary that the uh, your type of the soil would be same uh, the class of the soil would be same according to all the parameters say in some certain parameter it would be class 2 in some other parameter it would be class 3 so accordingly you have to fix <coughs> and the worst case scenario would be your the class of the land that we will be discussing in the practical class maybe we will be uploading it and we will be combining these two classes together so that you have a better understanding of this land capability classification. So this much for today. Thank you very much for your attention.